Welcome back to 820 special relativity. In this section, we're going to talk a bit more about collisions. I've already seen collisions in study, uh, momentum conservation in previous sections. Um, so here we can have uh, collisions and we can describe them in the center of mass frame, for example, where the total momentum is equal to zero. So in, in case of the collision of two particles, the momentum of particle one plus the momentum of particle two is equal to zero. We have then we can then describe the energy and the momentum of the particles before and after the collision. In the lab frame, the situation is different. Here, typically, we have one particle with some momentum hitting another particle, which is at rest. But we can also have different types of collisions. We describe or characterize elastic collisions where the kinetic energy is conserved, and so is the mass. So here you can think about two billiard balls colliding uh, without any friction, in which case, you know, they don't change their appearance, their mass, everything is unchanged, they just change the direction. The total kinetic energy in these collisions are typically conserved. But we can also have inelastic collisions, and there's two different kinds, so sticky kinds, where the mass after the collision is greater, so you have two particles, for example, maybe they stick together with some, um, you know, like Play-Doh balls, um, and the kinetic energy after the collision is smaller. Or you can have explosive collisions where the mass afterwards is smaller. Maybe you start from one heavy big object and then it explodes into many smaller ones. But the kinetic energy after the collisions is much is, is smaller. Those are also collisions. So here we want to do uh, an activity and study an inelastic collision. So before we have two particles there of billiard balls, they're exactly the same and they have a velocity u. Um, and after the collision, the mass is capital M, uh, big mass. Um, and we want to describe this collision once in the center of mass frame and one in the laboratory frame. And so the question now is, uh, are the masses and energy is energy conserved in those collisions? And we want to des describe this in both, both reference frames. So again, stop the video here and try to work this out. I already did this, so I discussed before, uh, you know, in, in, in those collision problems, it's always in, important to really be clear the situation before the collision was A, the situation after the collision was B. So I'm descri describing this here first in the center of mass frame, where the X, uh, just talking about the X component here, the X momentum is zero, which is equal to the mass times U times gamma minus the mass times u times gamma, that's zero. The energy before is two times the mass times gamma times c square. After the collision, the particle is at rest. The new one particle is at rest and has an energy large m over times c square. In the laboratory frame, the situation is different. There is x momentum, zero minus m times u prime. This is a different velocity times gamma of u prime. So here I'm trying to indicate that this gamma is not the same gamma as over here. This is the gamma where the velocity is u prime. And the energy is the rest mass of the particle at rest plus the mass times gamma times c square of the second particle. After the collision, the particle has some velocity u. And so the momentum in x direction is minus large m times u times gamma of u again, and the energy is large m times gamma u times c square. Okay, good. So now we can use momentum conservation and find this equation here, and from which we can then calculate that the large mass is equal to two times the smaller mass. Okay. So what you find is and this is the relativistic mass, you find that as a conclusion, that the rest mass is not conserved. The mass of this big ball is not simply the mass of the two rest masses or two times the mass of the rest mass. You have to consider this gamma factor here. It's two times the relativistic mass if you want. But you also find that the total energy is conserved in the collision so that the sum of m naught gamma times c square is conserved in the collision, irrespective of how you actually in which reference frame you discuss the problem. I want to 
close this part of collisions um, with a small discussion of units, and that will become interesting or important um, later on when we look at particle physics examples. So in particle physics, we often talk about units of electron volt in collision experiments or mega electron volts or giga electron volts, tera electron volts. So one electron volt is the uh, kinetic energy of a particle with charge E, uh, which is um, accelerated in a potential of one volts. So that corresponds, that's the unit of energy, and it corresponds to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joule, or 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 kilogram meter square over second square. So the mass of an electron is really, really small. And those units here are introduced because the mass is, mass is small and we want to have reasonable numbers to work with. So the mass of the electron is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilogram. Um, so if you just rewrite an m naught as equal to m naught c square times one over c square, you find that, huh, now we rewrite this and find that, you know, the mass is eight times 10 to the minus 14 joule over c square. Or in units of electron volts, five times 10 to the five electron volts over c square, which is 0 0.511 mega electron volts over c square or 511 kilo electrons over C square. So when we talk about the mass of an electron, we sometimes approach this with natural units in which C square is equal to one. And as you know, just simply say that the mass of an electron is 511 k uh, kilo electron volts. The mass of a muon is um, mega electron volts and, and so on and so on. 